What's up guys, Jeff Travelier, AthleteX.com. Today I'm gonna to show you how to fix plantar fasciitis once and for all. All right guys, so if you have plantar fasciitis, you know it. It's one of those ailments that you instantly know you've got because you got that defined heel pain, that, that almost that sharp knife-like pain in your heel, especially when you get up in the morning, you take that first step, and it feels like someone's ripping your, your, your uh, underfoot apart. And that is essentially kind of what's happening there because the plantar fascia, which we're gonna show with this little uh, uh, piece of band here, is absorbing stresses that it never has to in the first place. And the problem is that all of our focus and attention when we go for treatment is on this plantar fascia. And that's the mistake. Because again, this is not the cause. This is the result of what's happening somewhere else. So when we look at the foot and we look at the plantar fascia, you know what it does is it's supposed to attach back from the heel up towards the toes. And what its main function is, is it actually provides some support for that arch that we have in our foot. A lot of us don't have it. I have none because I have an extremely flat pronated foot. But it's supposed to provide some good support for the arch. But what it's not supposed to do is have to provide support during propulsion. And, all, and to absorb all the forces of propulsion when we move our body. And that's what we're actually asking it to do by having ro uh, things wrong with the mechanics of, say, our ankle or our knee or our hip or even our back, our spine. Literally, our, our, our mid-back can cause issues down here. And you have to address those. So if we're, if we're talking about this, why is it so important? Well, because it comes down again to the heel. And you can see here with the heel, there's a couple of states I want you to see, guys. The first thing is we know we have mobility of the heel. This is the calcaneus. And we know that it can move either in, this way, inverted, or it can move out, everted. And when it moves out, that's associated with this ability of the midfoot to adapt to the surface that it's on. This becomes a lot looser. So if I actually take this and I move it out, and you can do this on your own foot, by the way, and you'll feel this. If, if, if you move the heel out, you can see that all the joints here in the midfoot are nice and loose and mobile, and I could actually twist and turn. And that's what happens when our foot hits the ground. We go into this pronation, the heel kicks out, we go into this pronation so that we have the ability to adapt to the surface. Even if it was an uneven surface, you want to have the ability to have that mobility to absorb the stresses of that. If your foot was a rigid lever here and it hit the ground every time, there's nowhere for the forces to go except up into the knee, up into the hip, or even up into the low back, which is going to cause problems. You want that mobile adaption here to absorb those forces. Okay? The next thing it does, though, is if I turn it in and I invert it, well, what's happened here? All that mobility is gone. You can see this is a lot more rigid here than it was before. And that's actually a very important thing and a good thing because what happens when I want to push off my foot when I'm running? I want it to be rigid so I can push off and, and gain, gain a lever and propulsion force forward. If it was trying to push off of a loose foot, you can see that that would be unstable and it's not really uh, productive in terms of propelling me any, any distance with any force. So there's the problem. The problem is what happens is when we get into a position where we need to propel, that foot is in an unstable, loose state. That heel is everted instead of inverted. So how do we fix that? What's the cause? Well, there's a lot of causes. Let me show you. So we come back up. Again, people spend all their life rolling it out with a tennis ball, getting ultrasound on the bottom there, doing all things to try to loosen that up, when that is not the problem, guys. That is not the problem. You're going to get temporary relief of a symptom, but you're not going to get at the cause. All right, so throw that away. So what we do is if I'm in, let's talk about walking or running. As I start to walk, again, when my foot hits the ground here, I need the ability to adapt to that surface. That's just going to allow the absorption of forces so I don't get too much going up into my knee or hip or low back. And then as I start to go through and walk through, I need this to at some point lock up. We need that heel to kick in so that I get that uh, ability of that foot to be a rigid lever so I can actually propel, propel off and then step through and go again. Well, I can tell you this. If you have tight calves, you're going to lose that ability to do that. You're going to cause a timing issue down here in your foot that's going to be felt and absorbed by the plantar fascia in a way that it's not meant to handle. Let me spell that out for you a little bit more and show you how that works. So let's say I'm, I'm let's work on this side here. As I'm through, you can see that that is the moment in, in, in uh, gait that I need the most dorsiflexion, meaning the bending of the ankle upwards, right? Closing down this angle between my shin and my foot. I need dorsiflexion here. So as I go through, if I don't have dorsiflexion, why? Because I have tight calves and I can't get that. 
then what's going to happen? I'm going to get dorsiflexion, but not from here. I'm going to get it through that midfoot. Well, how do we get that dorsiflexion here through the midfoot? We have to make sure it's loose. We have to make sure it's unlocked. We have to make sure that that heel is kicked out. So what we do is, if we look at it, and I'm going through here, oh, I don't have any more dorsiflexion, but I know I need it because I need to be able to load this hip up to be able to come through. What, is it, what am I going to do? At that point, I'm going to take it from here by keeping the heel kicked out by having the foot collapse down. Now guess what happens? Now when I go to take a step, and I'm not just talking about taking one. I'm talking about go run a mile and take hundreds and thousands of steps. Every time I'm pushing off of an unstable foot, a loose, floppy foot, and the only thing that can provide support for that is that little, lousy little plantar fascia under your foot that is not designed to do that. Support the arch in standing, great. But be able to supply the, the rigidness to the foot to be able to pr propel yourself, no chance. So now I try to push, and I try to push, and I try to push, and I do that over and over and over and over again. That creates a lot of uh, inflammation and strain in that tendon. It, over time, can cause some uh, tension stress on that tendon this way, which causes heel spurs to form because of all that traction stress, and it's just a big mess. But you need to stretch your calves out. So we talked about some other causes. I'm going to get into those in a second, but what's the problem? What, what would you do for your calves? Like, oh, I'll just go, I'll hang off of here like this. If I just do this, and I hang down, this thing's going to freaking fall over on me. If I'm here, and I stretch my calves like this on the stairs, that should do it. No, that won't do it. That, no, that won't do it because you're not mimicking the stress that you're actually under when you're at that moment in that backside of the gate there that you, need to, that you need to fix. So what you would do is you do a stretch over here against the wall. And you're probably saying to yourself, well, I've done this before. Oh, okay, that's the kind of, uh, do that calf stretch? Yeah, do that with both your knee bent and with your knee straight. So we work the, uh, the gastroc and the soleus, and I should be good to go. Not really. There's something you're overlooking here. If you remember when I actually took this position here, that position of the heel, right? We said that the problem was that the heel was actually kicked out at that point. We want the heel to be able to be inverted, kicked in, so we could turn it into that rigid lever that we could propel off of. So if we're in that position here, what you want to do in order to turn this heel back in the proper position to be inverted here, you want to drive your foot across your body here. Okay, so you want to drive your leg across your body so it's not just this way, because if I'm doing this, I'm actually just feeding more into that down and in position, which is part of the problem. But I could turn it on by just allowing my foot to come and reach this way. So as I reach into the wall that way and stretch back here, now what I've done is you can see I've kicked that heel in, which has turned this foot into the lever it's supposed to be, and now I'm stretching out the calf in that position. Okay, just like that. And what we could do is we could actually make it more dynamic where we go and we just sort of reach across the body that way. But as I reach in, I'm, I'm actually still pushing down, making sure this heel is in contact with the ground to stretch that calf out. And if I wanted to turn in all three dimensions, I could just try to rotate back towards you guys there. And you can see that just by rotating how the heel has to kick in and I maintain that stretch. You walk away from that stretch and now you're like, wow, that feels a lot looser. Now if I'm in this position here, my heel's better able to absorb those stresses and turn into that rigid lever without it having to be thrown onto that plantar fascia, which is the problem. Now, what, how could other things be causing it and what could you do? Outside of doing that stretch, which by the way, it, a quick way for you to tell, if you have pain, let's say in my left foot, and you go to test your calf flexibility, if you notice that you have tight calves, then that is almost always the cause of the problem that you're dealing with. So you would stretch the calves, like I said, and you do this religiously every single day, okay? Just go through it for about three to five minutes every day, sometimes multiple times a day. And over the course of a few weeks, by taking the stress off of that plantar fascia, that inflammation will go down and your problem will be solved once and for all, okay? But let's say you test your calf on that side and it's loose. You don't have any tightness in your calf, but you still have, you still have pain there. Well, then you gotta look at the other side. Because problems on the other side can cause loading issues on that side. So let me give you an example. We talk about many times here, guys, before the, the importance of having glute medius strength and how weak glute medius and not, look, squatting alone is not going to do it, guys. Deadlifting alone is not going to do it. You need to strengthen those muscles independently. If I have a weak glute, glute medius that does this, right? We know that it's that, it's that Trendelenburg gait that Jesse demonstrated so well back in that anterior pelvic tilt video. If this drops, because this is loose here, what is it done to this foot? You can see what happened again. If I 
put my weight this way because I have a weak glute medius on this side, you can see it's collapsed this foot. It's kicked the heel out on this side. It's made the arch fall here. It's created that loose midfoot. So now if I'm trying to run and I've got a weak glute medius on the opposite side, you can see how all those things are going to happen again. I'm going to have that midfoot trying to propel an unstable foot and we're going to have a lot of issues. So you'd want to strengthen this opposite side glute medius. And I've done a whole video on that, on how to do that. I'll actually link those at the end of this video. But you would do something like if I was trying to strengthen this glute medius, I'd stand up here against a wall, I'd let it drop out to the side, and then I'd just lift it up and squeeze in, okay? So drive this hip towards the wall. This is just going along for the ride. Drive it in, squeeze. Drive it in, squeeze. And you can feel it right here in that glute medius doing all the work. You could do that, you could even weight it by, by using a resistance band as well. Now, one last thing. I talked about all the way into the low back or the mid back. How the hell could that have any impact on what's going on? Well, when you walk, you're supposed to be able to rotate, right? You don't see it as much, but we do obviously as we step, we, we rotate with every step we take. So let's say I'm able to rotate this way, right? I'm going to over rotate this way. What happens as I rotate this way? You can see that this foot comes down. It goes from here and down, right? So that means if I can rotate in this direction, this is going to come down. If I can't rotate back, that's going to cause a problem in our ability to get out of that position here. If I lack rotation in the opposite direction, that's going to prevent me from being able to, in a, in a uh, magnified way as we do step after step after step after step and run after run, that's going to prevent me from getting, being able to get off of that unstable foot and that's going to cause a problem. So again, an inability to rotate can cause that foot to be put in the same position. So you want to maintain thoracic extension because thoracic extension gives you the ability to rotate. I can't rotate much when my spine isn't extended. If I can get full thoracic extension, you, again, watch the video that we did on, on, um, on the posture fixes on how to do that. It's critical. You need to maintain thoracic extension. But if I could get there and then I could do rotation as well, and we, we could work on that with the drill I'm actually showing you right here, which I've shown you many, many times before. Those will now allow you to maintain good mobility through your spine so it doesn't download towards your ankle and into your plantar fascia, once again causing all these issues. So the highlight here, guys, is you've got some things to work on. The first thing you need to do is figure out what is essentially causing your pain. Run through some tests to see your stiffness and your flexibility on those ankles. Assess your glute, uh, your glute strength. See if that could be an issue. And once you've identified it, guys, it's going to all make sense. But for heaven's sake, stop looking at your plantar fascia and blaming it and saying, why is this damn thing not working? And why, why is not just rubbing this ball maintaining a, a solution to this for, for, the, for the long term? Because that's not the problem. That's never the way to solve it, guys. You've got to look above at the other joints to see what's going on because we are one big kinetic chain. So there you have it, guys. I hope you found this video helpful. We always try to put the science back in strength here. Again, it's a little bit of a detailed explanation, but I think the guys that are suffering from this and, gir and girls are going to really appreciate the explanation because they're finally going to understand why they haven't been able to solve it. If you're looking for programs that build in the science into everything we do, all of our training, all of our workouts built on science, you can get them over at athletex.com. In the meantime, if you found the video helpful, let me know below um, and leave your comments. What other things have I not covered that I can maybe help you to address? And I'll be glad to do those in the days and weeks ahead. And if you haven't already, guys, please subscribe and turn on your notifications so you never miss a new video from us. All right, see you soon.